Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. And this morning, we are joined by a chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of uh, Journalism, Jide Johnson. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. Morning to you. We're kicking off with the Punch newspapers this morning. Um, it's going to be on your screen in uh, just a few seconds, and we can get through some of these major stories uh, for, uh, making headlines across Nigeria today. There you have it. It says the federal government fails to recover $69 billion loot in American banks. Uh, 28.3 trillion naira illegal funds remain in Texas banks since firm's discovery in 2019. Ex-NSA Azazi's $9 billion loot can be recovered within three months, says the U uh, U.S. firm. Also, Naira slips to $490 to a dollar at a, par a parallel market. CBN plans digital currency. 25 generals and others may go as Yahya emerges Chief of Army Staff. Um, Ex-General acts a new Chief of Army Staff to prioritize anti-terror and banditry fight. Also, COVID-19 vaccination suffers setback. Federal government laments vaccine shortage. We can also see here NLC rebukes governors uh, on provocative fuel price proposal, threatens strike. Still on the punch news for this morning, Buhari hosts children. Federal government launches 40 million safety kits for kids. Saraki kicks as Quara panel recommends ex-governors and others prosecution. Police impound 70 Okadas, declare fresh clampdown on Lagos errant riders. And FIME suspends provost over college fumigation crisis. Uh, probe begins. Um, I'm just going to quickly uh, throw in this one. Federal government lists fresh uh, 132 COVID-19 travel guidelines offenders. All right, uh, that's all the stories on the punch we're sharing. On the Daily Independent newspaper, fear of EFCC 2023 poll driving PDP governors, senators to APC. Malami Bagudu Buni Badaru leading recruitment. But they judge here saying they are jumping from frying pan to fire. Constitution review, state creation tops list of submissions at Northeast public hearing. BPE considers sale of transmission company. Somo Olu renders account of two years stewardship, promises more people-oriented projects within next 24 months. Ignore IPOP city order, Emo government tells residents. Assets, try Saraki others, white paper panel tells uh, Gov Quara governor. Buhari appoints Yahaya chief of army staff. IGP differs with governors and creation of state police, says they've recovered weapons from secessionists and insurgents. Also saying gunmen who attacked Governor Autumn have been arrested. Also on the Daily Independent newspaper, 54 oil pipelines vandalized in February. That's according to the NNPC. Lastly, on the Daily Independent, INEC to create 2,673 registration centers and resumes continuous voter registration, CVR, on June 28th. And on the Daily Sun, on the newspapers, open grazing ban, Mieti Alla seeks meeting with governors and other leaders. 45 generals to retire as Buhari names Yahya Army Chief. Officers, of course, 35 and 36 most affected. COVID-19, don't worsen children's problems with another crisis. UNICEF warns federal government. And Nigeria on the brinks, says, uh, say, Yoruba elders. Police arrest attackers of Autumn's convoy as force uh, claim recovery of 5,000 weapons from secessionists and bandits. IGP says SARS uh, disbandment creating vacuum. Immigration ramps up production to beat deadline for passport back, uh, backlogs. Uh, one or two others. Constitution, Northern Governors set up committee on restructuring. And Imo government <laughs> denies issuing shoot on site order and mass arrests. Uh, I think the, these are the ones we can share on the Daily Sun. And moving now to the Guardian newspaper. Fear of massive retirement grips officers as army gets new chief. Nigeria could lose over 30 generals in four months. YCE Southeast Group blasts Buhari, saying you're fueling tension and ethnic distrust. Buhari appoints Mohammed as Naptip DG, Habari NOA DG. Also in the Guardian newspaper, 
Buhari says we're targeting more than 3 million children for free feeding. SARS disbandment creating security challenge, IGP cries. FG warns culprits as INEC records 41 attacks on fatalities. How Attorney General of the Federation illegally transferred 59 billion Naira from EFCC account. That's interesting. Nigerians to pay more for imported vehicles from June 1st. Hike in terminal handling charges move businesses to neighboring countries. Dealers lament high cost, low patronage for used vehicles. And a stakeholder has alleged that this is a ploy to discourage vehicle importation. Also on the, pond, on the Guardian newspaper, fresh, fresh concerns greet plant privatization of the TCN. Uh, there are other papers we can look at, maybe one more. Uh, I think we can just quickly uh, squeeze in the nation newspapers this morning. Um, how NSAS protest weakened police, and that's from uh, the Inspector General. States already running local police, Operation Restore Peace yielding results. Also, legislative, judicial, and financial autonomy set for takeoff. Presidency, governors, and unions reach agreement. Still on the nation this morning, gunmen killed two policemen in Zamfara. Buhari to kids, I'll end abductions. Also, theater uh, commander Major General Yahya is a new army chief. South South demands more derivation cash. A Feniferous snobs hearing. And 41 INEC offices destroyed in 14 states, says the chairman. Finally, Kwara government and uh, Saraki bicker over sale of uh, state assets. 26 bodies recovered in ferry accident. Those are the stories on the Nation newspapers this morning. Uh, Mr. Gide Johnson, good morning once again. And uh, you can go ahead. Yeah, um, let's take the issue of uh, the appointment of the chief of army staff. Um, which has led to the implication that two sets of the Nigerian military will be forced to retire because um, you can't serve under someone that is your junior when you are, when you are commissioned ahead of him. Um, said close to about 30 generals, but do we know how much it costs to trace a general? I think the president should be a bit strategic in his appointment. And um, the way we go about these things, if this 30 general had to, had to retire, that means that we have to promote others too. And in the process, who is paying, who is paying for that for that cost? There is a cost implication to every decision that that we take. The last one, we saw what has happened over time. Are, we, are you telling us that there are no other people in cost 34 or cost 30, 35 or 36 before you go down to cost 34? So it's important for the president to be strategic because every decision that is taken has its own implication, it has political implication, it has social implication, and it has economic implication, and it has even security implication. What would be the morale of the entire military when you sidestep two, two generations to go to the next generation before you make your, your pick? And there's nothing extraordinary about your pick. Anybody will just know that there is a rule of the thumb. There is a particular characterization that guides your choices of chief of army staff. It's not that you went out of your way um, to do something which is extraordinary. It's a predictable decision. Why do you take predictable decisions? Are you telling me there are no people in other sets that fit in, into the criteria that you have used to pick the present chief of army staff? Well, the, there's, this the, is nice there's the yeah. argument that the um, um, Yahya is uh, battle trained, and you know, and of course, had hair, um, you know, uh, been in charge of uh, some of the operations uh, fighting Boko Haram. Uh, and the bandits in the north, and that's why he, of course, uh, became favorable to take that uh, position. Do, do you do you think that's a good so enough others, point? Uh, uh, others, others that have that have handled that uh, Boko Haram front line, they are not bad to train. Other in those other sets are not bad to train. Well, it's the, it's the prerogative of the president to appoint whoever he feels as the as the commander in chief, whoever he feels should be the the chief of army staff. But what what I'm saying in effect is that. The president should understand this fact that this decision has a lot of implication. And when you take that decision, you see that you affect the morale of, of the military that you require to fight in security, or you uplift the morale of the military that you want to fight in security. And also don't forget that the issue of appointment of chief of army staff in the last in the last six, seven years had been characterized 
there is a particular pigmentation as you can narrow it down to this chief of army staff must come from a certain section from a certain part of the country it's not good it's not good for any nation that has in his motto unity peace and justice justice talk about being just just mean just talk about being equitable giving everybody equal opportunity of having access to become whatever he or she wants to become in nigerian nigerian army nigerian military but it's there is evidently clear that decisions that we have taken with the appointment of chief of staff that are sensitive that to some certain people that no matter how brilliant they are no matter how 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 how, how, how strategic they are they can never become the chief of army staff of of, of nigeria and it's not good it's not good for a nation that is trying to build its nation that is trying to build the morale and build unity and coexistence among the various right. units on people that constitute the nation so well hopefully we hope yeah yeah we wish him the best we hope the fight against injust insurgency and banditry will be dealt with um will be dealt with, dealt with decisively okay. time is just a matter time will tell and we our prayer and our hope is that this issue of banditry will be dealt with now the justification for his appointment is that he could uh, because he's involved in the front line he will be able to deal with that uh, particular uh, problem another story that um, caught my attention is the naira is, is the is the story of naira naira slipping to 419 naira to a dollar and in, in the parallel market you know it's only in nigeria that you have people it's only in nigeria and i'm saying it and i stand to be corrected that you see people trading in currency you see people trading in currency other than going through the banking sector you have an informal sector that trades in currency that you can buy foreign currency on the roads and there are no there have never been any attempt to correct to correct that definitely people are making money from this exchange rate so the higher the exchange rate the more money they they make because there are two markets you have the official market and then you have the parallel market so if you have if you run your economy on two two parallel lines they say can never meet except in infinity and nobody knows infinity so our economy will be top seat of it because once you can't control your exchange rate you have you have you have disrupted the ability of people to do businesses because trading is affected because there's no confidence in your currency there's fluctuation in your currency and the value of goods and services is tied to the value of your currency so if your currency is valueless your foreign exchange earning will will, will be affected the standard of living of your people will be affected. Your gross domestic product and your gross national product will be affected. So it's 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 it's, it's very very clear. If you want to grow this economy, we must do something about the value of naira. Naira must you must know the value. It must not fluctuate, like 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 the end of 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 you know the old the old clock that we used to use. So it's important for us to talk about that. Another story is about vaccine shortage. Um, in this era, where they are trying to even appeal to people to take vaccine in civilized climate, we are talking about vaccine. I think there are, there are no vaccine to vaccinate the entire world. And we shouldn't be talking about vaccine such, shortage in this, because the, the price we pay for not getting as many people as possible to the point of having herd immunity will be much more than the price we pay if we don't get people vaccinated. So government needs to take constructive action in in ensuring that Nigerians will get enough vaccine to vaccine as many people that are willing to get vaccinated so that we can get to the point of health immunity and we can deal with COVID-19 okay. pandemic. So, Mr. Um, Mr. Jide Johnson... I commend the president for... Yes. Okay. So, um, m moving quickly to um, the story of, you know, the big national issue right now, which is the Constitution Review. We know that um, it, it has started and... You know, just like uh, this newspaper, the Independent mentioned that um, state creation tops the list of submissions at the Northeast public hearing. So, first of all, do you think we need to create new states in Nigeria? And how will that help in solving all the ethnic and secessionist agitations we've, we've been seeing? Do you think we need this jamboree called Constitutional Review again? That's the question we need to ask. Do you think we need to create this jam? This constitutional review will lead to nothing. Mark my word. Look, in 2019, in 20, prior to 2019, the Electoral Act was passed by the National Assembly. 
it was passed by the president didn't assent to that bill. This, the National Assembly didn't have the gumption to use to third majority to override the president's assent to prepare us for 2019 election. Till date, nothing has been done concerning the Electoral Act. And we are having an election in 2023. And there's a story that talked about INEC having close to about 41 of their offices being born in 14 states. And they're having the National Assembly setting up a constitutional review panel across the length and breadth of this nation after spending two years in the National Assembly, having less than one year to do legislative work. Because by the end of this year and the start of next year, politicking will start. So it's just a distraction. They are trying to deceive Nigerians in their usual way that they are doing something. But in natural sense, they are doing absolutely, they are doing absolutely nothing with, to, to, that, to, that, to that effect. You see, they are saying state creation. You know what the constitutional requirement for state creation? Now, the states that we have, they are not financially solvent. They can't even pay minimum wage. They can't pay minimum wage. You now want to create states, states that can't generate internally generated revenue, that can't sustain themselves, that relies on federal allocation. You now want to create additional burden by creating states. The state you have created, have they solved the problem? Now, in the Northeast, where you have insecurity, that's where your people are clamoring for the creation of states. Which state do you want to create in the Northeast? Yeah, I think if you want to create states, you should be talking about having your political balancing so that we have seven states like we have in the northeast in the north in the, in the northwest rather we have seven states in the north central we have seven states in the northeast we have seven states in the southwest and we have seven states in the south south and then we have seven states in the southeast that means that you have to create two additional states in the southeast one additional state in the south south one additional state in the southwest and one additional state in the in the north central one additional state in the northeast, the northwest is already seven. It's, it's, it's low-sided. So if you are talking about equity, well, if you are looking at it from that angle of equity, you can create those states. But if you are looking at it in terms of viability of those states, I tell you, people just want to create an empire. Somebody wants to become a governor. Now, if you create those states, you have state as of assembly. You have three senators per those states. How many senators are we going to have? Already our senate. Our, our National Assembly is too bogus. It's too big. There can't be meaningful deliberation in the house where you have 360 members. So I don't know what they want to do. But they want to distract us. They want to tell us that they are doing something. The question you need to ask is, what is Lawan? What was Lawan and Bajabi Amila doing before now, before they start this jamboree in the second year of this of the night National Assembly. So it's a major distraction. Nigeria should not bother themselves. I can tell you without, 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 without fear that that constitutional review will lead to nothing. The one they had in Lagos, they had an argument, and you called me a talk. You didn't call me a talk. Uh, you called me this. You called me... You see what will come out. In some of the cities, they will beat themselves All right. in the typical fashion of when we can't resolve issue among ourselves. All right. The um, One of the stories also says, uh, that's from the Inspector General of Police saying the... Uh, end SARS protest and the disbandment of SARS weakened the police force. You know, I think he's trying to blame that for, uh, you know, some of the well, inadequacies of the police uh, 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 currently. Do you agree with him? When he says it weakens the police force, what he's telling you is that there's a need for us to bring back um, SARS. And the protest was, the, 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 the basis of the protest was not on whether there should be a police formation to deal with robbery. No. The basis of the protest was that the conduct of the men and women of the anti-robbery squad is, 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 is not acceptable to Nigeria because the rights of Nigerians are infringed upon. And I thought that the last Inspector General of Police said they have set up a new body, they did training for them. What people are clamoring for is police to respect fundamental human rights of people, not that you disband. You could change the name, give them a new orientation, change their attitude, and for them not to harass innocent Nigerians, to harass young Nigerians, to engage in police brutality. That's the argument. So when the Inspector General of Police says it has weakened the police, he's telling us that he's failing in his duty. If he's not able to perform his duty, he should resign and give someone else to take the job because he's given that assignment as the Inspector General of Police to help the president in the area of policing. He should not be telling Nigeria that the police is weakened. That's a wrong statement coming from someone that is in charge of 
policing. Now, in his, in, his, in his remark, he said something about community policing. And whether we like it or not, there's a need for us to engage in community policing. And you could do that through the posting. We have said so many things concerning this. You could do that through the posting of people to their local communities. Because they are aware. Because when you do recruitment into the police, you do recruitment using the 774, 774 local governments in Nigeria to recruit. If it's five per local government, you do five per local government. The interesting thing is that by the time, by the time you get to when they should be given appointment at the top level, you see the appointment tilting towards side. So if the Inspector General of Police does not know his owners and he does not know how to deal with the issue, I think he should resign. Or he should call for a strategic meeting in his force and they look at on how they can strengthen the police. There were issues that were raised. It was the issue of welfare of the Nigerian police, the morale of the police. All of these issues were raised. What have they done to that effect? We should not treat issue on the surface. We should deal with the main issue. There are other issues apart from police brutality. If you look at Lagos panel, there were police officers that were rewarded because some of them lost their life in the line of duty. So it's beyond, and the protest was not limited to um, police brutality. It was limited to having an holistic review of what the police force should look like in terms of their morale, in terms of equipment, in terms of their welfare package. And that's what the Inspector General of Police should look at, rather than complaining. He's okay, the one that Mr. is given the responsibility. Okay. If you wake up to the responsibility and not be going on the page of newspaper and be saying that the moral, the answers protest has weakened the police. All we right, need Mr. Gide community Johnson. policing. No doubt about that. We appreciate your analysis every time. Thank you again for coming on The Breakfast and have a beautiful Friday. Yeah, it's, it's my pleasure. I have to improvise this morning. I got to the office, there's no light. So I had to stay outside and use the, the wall of the fence as a backdrop. Uh, I hope uh, my audio is clear yes. enough. Yes, yes. And, uh, really and we, enough. we thank is you it? for your resourcefulness. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's All right. Uh, take a break here. We'll return to tell you events that shaped our history. And uh, I'll be telling you about the economic community of West African State and all about its formation. And of course, uh, once again to 2020, where one of the biggest protests in the world, um, of course, at this, po at this point, was ongoing. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that when we come back.